Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. Beyond a few exceptions, which I'll get into a bit later in this video, the last day of analog TV broadcasting in the United States was this past Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. I took a trip to document what TV stations were still broadcasting on the last day with the help of some viewer video submissions. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. I try to post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Some of you may be asking why there were still TV stations broadcasting in analog until a few days ago. Weren't they supposed to shut down back on June 12th of 2009? That deadline only applied to full power TV stations and not low power TV stations or translator stations. Originally, the plan for these TV stations was to convert to digital back in 2015. That deadline was pushed back several times, mainly due to the huge mess the FCC repack created for broadcasters. Specifically, it didn't make sense for low-powered TV stations to convert to digital if their channel was being sold to cell phone companies in a few years anyway, so they just wait until after the repack. Beyond a few repeaters in Alaska, analog TV should no longer exist in the United States as of Tuesday, July 13th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Despite this deadline, there might have been a few TV stations that didn't quite go off on time, which I'll cover later in this video. I began my trip on Tuesday afternoon to Binghamton, New York. A few months ago, there were two low-power TV stations there broadcasting in analog. My Network TV affiliate WBPNLP on channel 10, and Frank and FM WXXWLP on channel 6. When I arrived in Binghamton, both TV stations were off the air. WBPN is now simulcast in HD on full powered Fox affiliate WICZ, while Frank and FM WXXW has a construction permit to build a digital signal on channel 6. For those of you who don't know, Franken FMs are low power TV stations that broadcast on channel 6. You see, the analog audio carrier for channel 6 happens to be on 87.75 MHz, which can be picked up by most radios on 87.7 FM. This is only possible with an analog signal, so the shutdown puts a few dozen stations that fit into this category in jeopardy of going completely dark. I continued on my trip to Syracuse. My plan was to film the shutdown of WVOALP, another Franken FM on channel 6. Before I checked into the hotel, I brought out my little Panasonic TV to see if I could pick it up. Sure enough, there were the crazy shapes and patterns from an Atari video music system feeding the video carrier. What's very interesting about WVOALP is that it was picked up nearly 893 miles away by eSkip from Stephen, Missouri last week. This is a very rare occurrence considering WVOA only broadcasts at about 300 watts CRP. Here's a quick clip of the video. Keep in mind this was taken in Missouri. The person man is the one who delights in the law of the Lord, according to Psalm 1 verse 2. According to verse 3, he will prosper. Steve wanted me to mention that he's a member of the Worldwide TV and FM DX Association, a hobby club that caters to DXers. They publish a monthly magazine, have an email list, forum, and Facebook group. You can learn more about the club at WTFDA.org or by following the link in the description of my video. So back to my trip. When I set up the TV in my hotel room, I heard the following announcement on WVOALP. Thank you for listening to WVOA 87.7 FM. Due to the FCC no longer allowing any stations in the U.S. to broadcast on this frequency, we are moving all programming over to WSIV 106.3 FM and 1540 AM. Please reset your preset buttons to 106.3 FM and 1540 AM, The Voice. It seems that the content from WVOA will continue to be heard on other Syracuse area radio stations. Most Franken FMs are not this lucky and may go completely dark. Although the picture on my TV set was clear on this station, the fine tune was off, which resulted in no color being shown. I wasn't aware of this until after the TV station shut down. Thankfully, Steve Marlotta from Syracuse happened to film the shutdown as well. Instead of showing my black and white footage, I'm going to show his clip, which features WVOA shutting down in full living color. 
Thank you for listening to WVOA 87.7 FM. With great sadness, this concludes our broadcasting on 87.7. Due to the FCC no longer allowing any stations in the U.S. to broadcast on this frequency, we are moving all programming over to WSIV 106.3 FM and 1540 AM. Please reset your preset buttons to 106.3 FM and 1540 AM, The Voice. Well, bless God and glory. Josh from Northern Virginia captured the shutdown of WDCNLP, another Franken FM based out of Arlington, Virginia. It's known as La Nueva and broadcasts a Spanish format to the Washington, D.C. market. This is a very popular radio, I mean, TV station with over 225,000 likes on their Facebook page. Here's a video of the shutdown. Be sure to subscribe to Josh's YouTube channel, J Man to the 64. Click the card in the corner or in the description to subscribe. After all, he put a good effort into filming a shutdown of this radio, uh, I mean TV station. We are Latinos, so we are still... Uh... Jesus Villapondo captured WSRWLP out of Mammoth, California shutting down. Here's his clip. YouTuber pepsiri one es 92 captured WAWWLP still on the air in Rochester on July 13th. This is the same station I picked up on my trip to Rochester just a few months ago. I also found a video on YouTube of what looks like an HSN affiliate shutting down. You can find the link to the original video by clicking the card in the corner or following the link in the description of the video. Were there any TV stations that stayed on the air in analog after the July 13th deadline, whether it be accidental or intentional? Maybe. Time for some speculation from website forums. According to two posters on radiodiscussions.com, Franken FM WNYZ LP still had an analog signal on the air, at least on the audio side, broadcasting silence into Wednesday morning. Shame, 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 WNYZ. You should know better. The FCC needs you to shut down your analog signals so they can sell more TV spectrum to cell phone companies in a few years. Who cares about your underserved listeners? T-Mobile wants more TV spectrum. There might have been another TV station that stayed on the air in analog past the July 13th deadline. According to a poster on the AVS forum, a weak signal broadcast in urban format was heard on 87.7 FM somewhere near Baltimore. Another poster suggested it could be WTMO-LP out of Norfolk, Virginia. The station had previously been cited by the FCC for not operating within their authorized power or height, and was recently denied an application to continue broadcasting an analog audio signal, so they're definitely mad. While this is pure speculation, if it's true, WTMO, you gotta go. The FCC can't have you broadcast an analog signal because, well, analog TV is obsolete. No one wants it, especially not the millions of listeners of 87.7 FM radio stations nationwide. They will be served by the giant media companies that destroyed radio, I mean saved it. After all, limited local air staff, stale music formats, and the same 20 songs over and over again really caters to minority and ethnic groups. K29AB, a repeater of KICU-TV in San Jose, is reportedly still on the air and analog as of the morning of Thursday, July 15th. Keith sent me this video taken Thursday morning. While signal may look digital because Keith has a really good antenna setup, it definitely is analog based on this picture he also sent. Better shut it down before the FCC sends their goons to beat up your engineer. All jokes aside, it's the end of an era in the United States with analog TV pretty much ending. The only exceptions so far are two authorized stations broadcast in analog audio on 87.7 FM, the MeTV and Air One, and a few analog repeaters in Alaska because there are only a few months to work on broadcast towers in Alaska. I guess it gets too cold and you can't really climb a tower if it's frozen. Analog over-the-air TV had a charm that will never be matched. Yes, it was fuzzy and snowy at times, but if you were within the range, there always was a signal to be picked up. While termination of analog TV isn't that big of a deal for most TV stations that convert the signal to digital, it's definitely a loss for the millions of listeners of 87.7 FM radio stations that used to operate on Channel 6. Some of these stations have applied to continue broadcasting the analog signal alongside a new next-gen signal, 
but it's unknown how many will be approved. If it weren't for the brilliance of Venture Technologies Group owner Paul Coplin, there would be no hope at all for these stations, including MeTV FM in Chicago. If you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about in terms of this STA that was approved for MeTV FM and Air One in San Jose, make sure to click the card above to watch my video that kind of gives you an update exactly what's going on. I don't have enough time to explain it in this video, but I have a separate video that explains everything. For anyone who is curious, I made a raw video compilation of all the analog TV stations I captured within the last year. I attached a link in the description of this video if you just want to kind of watch the whole thing and see all the analog TV I captured. There's even a Simpsons episode in it. Thanks to all the viewers who submitted videos of analog TV stations being shut down. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antennaman or click the join button this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antennamanpa. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates when I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of this video. Just as a reminder, hit the bell notification if you want notifications when I post new videos. I try to post new videos every Tuesday and Friday for those of you who don't get notifications. So stay tuned to my YouTube channel, continue to watch these cool videos, and have an awesome day.